It's time already? All right. Hello, my YouTube friends. One of the biggest barriers for entry into live streaming is how difficult the software can be to set up. But there is a new software out there that's built specifically to make it easy to set up and go live on any platform really quickly. Of course, I'm talking about Meld Studio. I'm gonna show you how to install it and get up and streaming in no time flat today. So you know what? Let's get to it. Now Meld Studio is specifically designed so that it's easy to set up and go live. And there are links in the description down below so you can download it, check it out and follow along with me. That is the best way to learn. And by the way, it's 100% totally free. So let's go ahead and install Meld Studio. Here's the Meld landing page and it's pretty simple. You don't have to mess around with any of this, but it will tell you a little bit about what Meld Studio can do. We're just gonna go ahead and click download right here. And it is for Windows or Mac OS. So we're gonna go ahead and download it for Windows, what we're working on here. Puts it in your downloads folder. So we're just gonna go ahead into our downloads folder here. And we've got the Meld Beta Installer right here. And all we have to do is double click on that. And here we go. So this is a little bit different than a lot of the things that you're probably used to running. It is not really a program, it's more like an app. So we're just gonna click launch when ready and we're gonna put install in here and it's gonna run through a bunch of checks and then boom, it's gonna ask you if you wanted to access your camera. We obviously do. Wanna access your microphone, obviously we do. And it has a little bit of a thing here that shows you a little bit more about it. So you just click next and click get started. And here we go, this is what you're gonna see. It automatically has a microphone down here. It is the default input. Uh, generally speaking, I don't like stuff to load in that I don't know what it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that track. And now we're ready to get started with Meld. Now using it isn't any more difficult than the install. Let me go ahead and show you how to set up a stream and use Meld Studio. So let me explain the layout and then we'll set up a simple stream. Layers are things that appear in streams, like cameras or microphones or video content or anything like that. So you can have multiple different scenes that have a lot of different layers. And you can change those scenes from one to another to give each thing that your audience sees a little bit of a different look. Over on this side, we have outputs and the inspector. The inspector is going to give you different aspects of the layers that you put in there that you could change up. And then down here on the bottom, we have the audio mixer. So it is really simple. Of course, right here in the middle, we have the big screen that's just gonna be our preview window. So we're gonna start out, we've got one called scene here. If we double click, we can rename this. So let's just call this just chatting and we'll load a camera in here. So what we're gonna do is click the plus right here and we're gonna go to a video device. And I like how this works. It just kind of puts it in there. We can make it whatever size or shape we want. All we have to do is drop this down and we can select the camera that we want. So there we go. Now we can make this whatever size we feel like making it. Boom. We have a camera in here, but you're going to notice I don't have any audio. Okay. Well, that's fun. We're going to go ahead and click the plus and it adds a track. And then what we're going to do is go down here and we're going to select a device. Boom. We'll put our Camlink Pro in there. It adds it in here and we're all set. Now, if we wanted to check and see what our audio sounds like, we can go into Q here and monitor the audio, but we haven't set up our monitoring device yet. So we may want to wait on that until we do that. But now we have a just chatting scene, which is just me chatting. Let's go ahead and add a game scene. So we're going to click this plus right here and we'll double click here and we'll call this game scene. And then up here on layers, we're going to go ahead and add a game. And to do that, we're gonna go ahead and add a display capture. What this is gonna do is capture another window on the computer. And there we go. We can just square it up right there. Now you can also go over here into the details and just click fit and it'll fit it to the screen. And we can actually add an audio track for this source, but it doesn't really help because this monitor is not producing any sound. So what we would do is put a game over here and then capture the game audio. There's a couple different strategies for that. So let's load up a quick game. 
All right, so we've got our monitor captured. Our game is on there, but we only have my audio. You could see right here. Now we can actually go in here and name this too. Just double click it, rename it, and I'm gonna add audio for the game. So we're gonna click the mixer and we'll just call this game. And all we have to do is drop this down and we wanna select where we have our audio being played from right here. So in this case, our audio is being played through our headphones, the zone wireless speakers. So if we go to zone wireless speakers, we should get the audio that we're looking for. We just have to change this to output devices, and then we can go to zone audio speakers right here, and there we go. So now we've got game audio, and we've got our mic audio. You probably wanna add a camera in here as well so that your audience can see you. So just click here, go to video capture device, and we're gonna just bring this over here. And we're going to go ahead and select our device and we'll just change the size. Now, just so you know, changing the size here isn't going to change the size here. And let's show you a little bit about what each of these does. Now, if I select here, you can see we've got some stuff up here and down here and in the corners. If we select here, we've got all the same stuff. So you can do this with any window. But let's go ahead and select our camera window. And if we drag these little squares, we can kind of round off the edges. Really cool stuff. And we can go up here and we can crop those edges. Or you could select here and it'll give you the ability to stretch these in and out like that. We can click done. And once we do that, we can even crop these up again. So we can make it a circle or just round off the edges. If we select here, we get the circle. We get the vertical right here. And we can basically reset it back to the original right there. So I like that little square. And I like to add just a little bit of roundness to the edges. And I think that looks pretty good. So I want to put this over a light part of the screen so you can see what I'm doing here. We're going to go over here to effects and we're going to click this plus and we're going to add a drop shadow to give our camera a little bit more depth. Let's add some distance here and we'll make this 100% so that you could see what's going on here. When, when I move this around, we're moving our little drop shadow around, right? So I like to have drop shadow kind of down in the bottom right. We're going to make that distance a little bit less and we're going to add some softness to it and make it a little bit more opaque so now we've got a really nice look to our camera and we can place it anywhere we want on the screen now let's say that your game changes where the ui is sometimes it's up here and sometimes it's down here maybe we want to have a little bit more of a variety well i'm going to double click this and i'm just going to call this game scene one and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and right click and we're gonna duplicate that. And I'm just gonna call this game scene two. And then I'm just gonna move my camera somewhere else. And so now what I can do when we're playing a game is I can switch back and forth between game scene one and game scene two. My camera will just kind of do that thing. It'll float back and forth, but we can move it around the screen so that we don't have to worry about it getting in the way of the UI. And we can have as many of these as we want. So we can right click and duplicate. Well, now we can basically move the camera anywhere we want on the screen. And we can even do a fifth one. Let's go ahead and duplicate this and we'll go with five. And what we're gonna do is bring that here and we're gonna go ahead and just kind of reset it for this scene. And we can still round our corners a little bit. And you can see we still have our drop shadow as well. So it does maintain that. And there we go. So if we wanted to stop the game for a second just to say something to our audience or whatever, now we've got a scene for that as well. So we've got just chatting, boom, game scene with lots of different camera locations. And we literally set this up in minutes. So the only thing left to do is just configure it up so we can go live. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here to file and we're gonna go to preferences. So real quick, let's just take a look at this before we configure up where we're gonna stream to. Our canvas is 1920 by 1080. That's most likely how you're gonna to wanna to stream. Select your frame rate. If you're doing games, 60 frames per second is a good place to start. Video bit rate, this is probably fine. You can set this, I would say for 1920 by 1080, anywhere between 4,000 and 6,000 kilobits per second is fine. And it really depends on how powerful your machine is and how much bandwidth you have. 
Um, I generally stream at 6,000 kilobits per second, but uh, 4,000 will obviously be the best of both worlds if you have a little bit of an older machine and maybe a slower connection. So you got to kind of just decide where you want to fall into the bitrate scale and maybe do a couple of test streams and test it out. 4,000 might look great for you. You might not like it and you might bump it up to 5,000 or 6,000. So just test it out. Now we've got our preset, good quality, and our audio bitrate. You don't really need to touch any of this. We do want to have hardware encoder checked. If you're using a machine with a hardware encoder, we always want to use that. None of the rest of this recording stuff really means anything. So we're all set up there. Uh, there's nothing in plugins you need to worry about. Advanced is if you want to turn on the WebSocket because you're going to use some external applications to control meld. But this is a beginner, so we're not going to do that audio stuff, not really anything to change here except for your output audio device, which in this case is headphone zone wireless. This would be your basically your monitoring device where you would be listening to this. And this is important because if you wanted to give your microphone a good check to see if you can hear it, once you have your output device set up, you could go down here and click Q and have a quick listen to your microphone. You can also do that with your game audio or any other audio sources you have in here. So once you get that output set up in audio, you're going to be able to go ahead and give a quick listen to your stuff. Virtual camera you can install. That'll enable you to basically export this stream visuals anywhere you want. So you'll be able to export this and you can add that camera in Zoom or however you want to do it. Smart Guides basically is just the snapping tool for the edges of your different assets that you use in different scenes. You know, your layers, how they snap to the edges and that sort of stuff. Here you could set up your transitions. We have the move transition set up and that's what kind of moved our camera around the scene so smoothly. They have some other ones. They have the cut, the fade and the morph um, and it'll morph in and out in certain different kinds of ways and all that sort of stuff. I generally find that the move transition is the one you're probably going to use the most and you can set up how it eases in and out and then of course the duration, how long it takes. You can make this super fast and snappy or you can really drag it out like I have it drug out here. So if we move this way down here to a lower setting, it'll move a lot faster and the layer re rendering points you can change. So continuous midpoint all that sort of stuff. And then the last thing is hotkeys. So you can actually set it up so that you can use hotkeys if you wanted to change different scenes by using those hotkeys. You can easily set it up to do that. So real quick, let me show you what changing up that move transition actually looks like. Now we can see that it zips around the screen a lot faster and looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and set up our actual live streams. We're going to go into preferences and right here in general, we can go to our stream settings and you can see it says go big, stream to multiple platforms simultaneously. That's right. With Meld, you can stream to a bunch of different platforms at the same time. It's really very cool. We're going to go ahead and add an output. We're going to add YouTube and it's pretty simple. It will automatically put your stream URL in here. You could just go to YouTube and get your stream key. We can also just go log in with YouTube and select our account and just select all and click continue and now we are set up now YouTube is in there um, I just went back and forth from plugins to general now we see YouTube I can add another input in here as well we can go with twitch all we have to do is the same thing we just did go ahead and authorize the login and then we can just exit out of here go back into our meld studio and we don't see it right away. We go out to plugins, we go to general, bada bang. Now we're streaming to YouTube and Twitch. So if we close this out and we click go live, we're going to be going live to those two locations. You can see it right there. Boom. We can turn on the outputs and off the outputs by doing this right here. And of course we can record as well. It also has this nifty little clip button. We can clip 90 seconds. So the last couple seconds of whatever, we can clip that out and it will be saved into the location where you have your recording set up. So we have our recordings in here. We have a location set right here. 
and wherever you clip, that's where that recording is going to go. And that's pretty much it. It would only take you a few moments to set up some cameras and be ready to go live streaming your favorite games or whatever on Twitch and YouTube. And that is the beauty of Meld Studio. It's just really easy to use. I told you it was easy. It was specifically designed to be that way. Now, is it as powerful as other live streaming tools out there? No, that's not what it's for. It's specifically designed so that you can be up and live streaming in no time flat to as many platforms as you want. And I think it accomplishes that very well. And now you know the basics and you can be up and live streaming in no time flat as well. But if there is something I missed, let me know about it down in the comments because you know, I wanna make my videos as complete as possible. And if you wanna see how Meld Studio stacks up against OBS, check this video out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.